Permissions are where all the action of PDM happens. They're what gives you the ability to check out and edit a file. Without the right permissions, a user may not be able to work with or even see the files he or she needs to do their job. Today we're going to be going through some of the basics of permissions, what they mean, and how they impact the job that needs done. The first thing to know about permissions is how they're assigned. They can be assigned to either the group level or the individual level. Now it's important to note that permissions are typically assigned at the group level. Why is this? It's easier to administer groups than it is individual users. Even for small teams, groups make sense because in the event someone joins your team, it's easy to give them the correct permissions. To start off, we'll open the management group. I just created this group and I've started assigning some permissions to it. First, we're going to look at folder permission. Folder permissions are permissions based on the folder in which the user is operating. At the top, we can see the folder structure of our vault. We don't see any files, just the individual folders. I'm going to select the prototyping folder, and now we can see a list of available permissions on the bottom. Notice as I click through some folders that the permissions are the same. The folder structure works as a parent-child relationship, so unless this is changed, the child will inherit the rights from the parent folder. Of course, the child doesn't pass rights to another child, this isn't the flu. Let's go to the marketing folder. A CAD manager is probably not going to be operating in the marketing folder very often, so we're going to remove some of the permissions. We're going to remove the permission to check out files, delete files and folders, see the computed BOM, set the revision, and show working versions. If you want to see exactly what each of these permissions does, check out your help page. The directions for finding that are in the description. What I'm doing is removing the rights to manage the files in the folder. A CAD manager shouldn't be able to go in and check out files, delete them, set the revisions, or see files that are still being created. After the files are released, they should be visible, but probably not before. So if we go to the Assigned Folder Permissions tab, we see two folders. These folders are those that have had their individual rights changed. They've become orphans, so they no longer inherit their rights from their parents. You can add folders here and change their rights individually so that you don't have to sort through the folder structure. Alternatively, you can remove a folder from this list. Once that happens, the assigned permissions go back to matching their parents' permissions. Here's something that's really important to know. The rights of a file come from where the folder is in the folder structure and where it is in its life cycle. We've covered the folder structure, so let's now cover the life cycle. First, I'll change the workflow to make sure I'm working in the correct one. Now we can see the permissions we have in the pending approval state. Since a manager is likely doing the approvals, it makes sense to give them most of the permissions. Let's go to the release state and add some permissions. As I add these, remember that these permissions are designed to be put in place to match your process. Maybe your management team would be allowed to set their vision of a released file. If that's the case, you could always add that. 